Good afternoon, everyone. Could you please rise and join me in the singing of the national anthem? We have a number of recognitions today, uh, great things to celebrate in our community. Uh, first, super excited to uh, have members of the 2017 Employee Committee for the United Way uh, to join us this evening. Please come on out. Come on out. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> And watch out for the photo bombs too. <laughs> Just word to the wise. Um, so I want to thank uh, all of the volunteers, the staff, uh, members of council that were able to celebrate upstairs on the 12th floor just a few minutes ago. I also want to thank everyone for being so involved in this campaign. Earlier today, we announced that the City of London raised over $77,000 for the United Way in 2017. And I think it's really important to recognize that, that City Council set as part of our vision for London is uh, that we're building a better city. And we didn't stop there. We said we're building a better city for all. And it's not something that we can do as an organization on our own, not hardly. We need to reach out to wonderful organizations like the United Way, who then reach out to so many agencies uh, across London uh, to raise as much money as possible to support as many programs and services uh, as possible to help the most vulnerable uh, people in our community. And so, again, I'd like to invite anyone to say a few words if you like. But again, uh, congratulations to the City of London. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Zigner. I'm the CEO at United Way, Algin Middlesex. And just a quick thank you to all of our partners at the City of London, whether it be uh, Sandra Dater's Beer, who did a fantastic job heading up this year's campaign, um, all of the members of council, City Hall uh, employees and members of labor unions here at City Hall, all really rallied together in support of our community. And uh, our vision at United Way is a community where every Everyone matters, and so it's very aligned with um, the City of Lund London's vision of a London for all. And that means that more than 100 programs and services that provide that social service safety net in our community can continue to serve individuals and families when they need it most, and we know our community needs it right now. So thank you to all of you for your support, and um, we look forward to many years of working together. Thank you. Oh, 
Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> and again, colleagues, um, at this time, I'd like to ask the members of the Business Cares Food Drive to join us here in Council Chambers. 2017, welcome, welcome. 2017 marked the City of London's 15th year participating in the Business Cares Food Drive initiative. And during the three weeks, the campaign raised over $18,000 for the London Food Bank and collected over 3,600 pounds of food. Employees participated in various fundraising activities that included coffee and bake sales, a used book sale, a skating event, a festive photo booth, a U5 gift wrapping service, and a holly jolly treat trolley. Said it. A big thank you to the following groups for making such a significant contribution to the campaign. The London Professional Fire Association, QP Local 101, QP 107, a charity chest, employees of the City of London, City Council, and of course the senior leadership team as well. Thank you to everyone who continues to show leadership and commitment to help our community to make London a better place for everyone. And the message behind the Business Cares Food Drive is taking care of business means taking care of people. And that's exactly what happens year in and year out. So uh, to Wayne, uh, congratulations. Thank you very much for your leadership. Uh, to the City of London, thank you so much for participating in this program. I'd like to invite you up to the microphone. I bet you want to say a word or two. Only a few, all right? <laughs> I know you have a busy night, but what I'd like to say uh, to, to Council, to staff, to the locals, uh, uh, you've been partners with Business Cares for all these years, and we truly appreciate it. It's, uh, we've had a, a banner year. Just uh, nobody said no to the whole campaign. Um, the amount of money and food that we collected is, is so amazing, and that's the good story. The other side of it, the need continues to be there at the food bank, and what I really like about it is the inclusiveness of, of everybody at City Hall and all the locals and the, the city at large, I, I truly do. So on behalf of all of Business Cares, thank you very much for your continued uh, support and help, and you're a true partner uh, with Business Cares. So oh, thank you. we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one final group joining us today. We have the pleasure of welcoming John Davidson. Welcome, come on, come on out. Please come join me. So as everyone knows, John founded Jesse's Journey in honor of his son, Jesse, who was diagnosed with a muscular dystrophy at the age of six years old. In 1995, John pushed Jesse, then 15, in his wheelchair across Canada to raise funds for research. In 1998, 20 years ago this year, John walked across Canada to continue Jesse's journey. And on April 10th, 1988, in St. John's, Newfoundland, he took the first step on his 286-day journey to Victoria, British Columbia. The journey raised over $2 million and it allowed Jesse's journey to launch the Jesse Davidson Endowment Fund for Research. John was named in the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest crossing of Canada on foot. You ever feel like you wanna go and break that record? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he received the Order of Ontario along with Jesse. Uh, and John also was also London's official torchbearer in 2010 during the Winter Olympics. Today, Jesse's journey is known and respected internationally as a key player in this kind of research. It's the only charity in Canada dedicated solely to funding research into this specific type of muscular dystrophy. Over the last 20 years, they have granted more than $9 million to researchers across Canada and around the world for people who are working towards finding treatments and a cure. 
John's historic walk across Canada was coined Jesse's Journey, a father's tribute, 10 million strides for $10 million. And now, 20 years later, Jesse's Journey is on track to grant to achieve their 10 millionth dollar and granting that to research. They're inviting Canadians to walk or run to the same goal of 10 million strides. Their vision is to virtually go across Canada together. And the virtual walk runs from February 1st until October 31st. Participants can go to jessiesjourney.com to find out details. And the 20th anniversary of John's walk across Canada is a time to recognize his incredible accomplishments, the significant difference that Jesse's journey has made for so many. I can't wait to see what the next 20 years of progress and innovation looks like as you do everything you can to work towards supporting research to find a cure. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you have done. It's an honor to have you here in Council Chambers. Do I need to give us a minute? Thank you very much, Your Worship, and uh, members of Council, and members of the public, and uh, I'm happy to have with me Wendy Sanderson Cully from our office, who is the Managing Director, and uh, our gigantic office staff of three. Uh, we pride ourselves on being Canada's perhaps smallest and hardest working charity, and we have reached a point that uh, I like to think Jesse would be proud of, that we're now able to grant over a million dollars a year in research funding. And that has a unique uh, point to be made in regard to the people who are assembled here because it has put London very much on the map in terms of research. There was a day when we didn't hear from anybody, and now researchers around the globe look to London, Ontario, and Jesse's journey for funding. So our job is to keep that ball rolling, and as, uh, as the mayor said, uh, we do have our... Uh, walk, run, and roll virtual walk, which has taken off quite significantly. So people around the world are connected to London as they do their distance this year and uh, help us raise funds for the walk. And we will have our actual physical walk here in London on May 27th. And I was always proud to say when I was going across Canada that I was from London, Ontario, and am from London, Ontario. And um, I met so many people, particularly in the financial sector, bankers and uh, financial planners and so on, who when I was introduced to them, they always reacted the same. They said, oh, I always wanted to get transferred to London, Ontario. So uh, we should be proud of what we have. We have a number of issues that always keep us a little bit divided, but we should remember there are so many that keep us all united. So on behalf of everyone at Jesse's Journey, thank you all very, very much for this honor. It's deeply appreciated. Thank you. Take care. You too. Okay, colleagues, let's start on the agenda. Uh, look for any disclosures of pecuniary interest. Councillor Zaifman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, going to declare a pecuniary interest on item number seven from the third report of the Civic Works Committee uh, due to an impact on lands owned by my family. Colleagues, other declarations? There are none. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, let's then review of confidential matters to be considered in public. There are none. Uh, council in closed session. We have a number of reasons outlined on the added agenda. Anything that you'd like to read as well? Yes, Your Worship. We have an uh, additional reason as a result of uh, last night's uh, SPPC meeting. A matter pertaining to personal matters including information regarding an identifiable individual. With respect to employment-related matters, advice or recommendations of officers and employees of the corporation, including communications necessary for that purpose, and for the purpose of providing instructions and directions to officers and employees of the corporation, and advice subject to solicitor-client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Thank you. That's up on screen now. If we could open the vote. Sorry. 
sorry, we have one additional added reason. Go ahead. Uh, there is an additional reason to uh, regarding a matter pertaining to advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, and to provide uh, direction to uh, employees and officers of the corporation. Okay, so we'll wait for that to come up on screen. Moved by Councillor Salee, seconded by Councillor Usher. Any discussion? Let's call the question. We're voting. Councillor Van Holst. I'm sorry to mention that. I I don't have the buttons I need to click to uh, vote yay, but that's that's what I really hope to do in this situation. Okay, we'll register that as a yay. Anyone else? All right. I think Closing we're all set. the vote and the motion carries 14 to zero. So we'll meet in committee room three. Uh, members of the public, we will be out no later than 5:15. I'm not sure that that we'll need uh, the entire hour to get through the agenda, but we will be back out no later than 5.15. Thanks very much.
Okay, moving right along. It's just before five o'clock. Let's go to confirmation and signing of the minutes of the third meeting held on January 30th, 2018. That'll come up on screen in a moment. Any speakers? That's been moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Armstrong. Again, any speakers? Call the question. Voting. Councillor Van Holst. Is your system not working? It's working now? Okay, thank you. Motion carries 14-0. Communications and petitions. I do not believe there are any. Uh, motions of which notice is given. None. So let's move to the reports. This is the third report of the Civics Works Committee. Thank you. Um, at this time, I had not heard from any colleagues about pulling any set items, so I'm prepared to put the whole report on the floor. Council is going to speak to six, but no indication to pull any of the uh, clauses. Um, Councillor Zaveman has indicated clause seven as he has a conflict on it. Right. Okay. So we'll deal with uh, clause one through 22 with the exception of seven. Been moved by the chair, Councillor Park. And it's been seconded by Councillor Morgan. Before I call the question, I'll go to Councillor Squire. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to speak to number six. At the committee, I, I spoke to it and said how pleased I was with this project and the completion of it from Oxford Street to Platts Lane. I thought he had done a very good job. But when I was finished the next day on Twitter, a, a new friend said, would somebody explain to Squire that road widening does not solve congestion? So I, I had a meeting with him, and I agree with him that road widening doesn't solve congestion, but what we have on Western Road up to Platts Lane is really a pinching of traffic almost, that, that it changes and, and becomes wider and then, and then pinches. So I, I agree, you know, if you build, we see it all the time on the 401, if you just keep making more lanes, you get more cars. But I think if you look at this project in its totality, which is the great separate, or making the bridge, rail, rail bridge wider, also we're providing sidewalks and um, bike paths uh, for, uh, people on the roadway, which is really important because anyone who has tried to ride their bike up up uh, Western Road, Warncliffe up Western Road to the university will know that there's no really good way to do that. So um, for my friend who, who pointed out my error, which I accept, I just wanted to make sure that I, I really am supporting this, con this project for all kinds of reasons, primarily though because it provides all kinds of options for alternative transit. So I want to thank staff again. Thank you. Councillor Asher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I just want to uh, chat a little bit about item number 11. Uh, I, I do this because I think it's very, very important. We've got a lot of people throughout the city who want to hear a little bit more about um, how they can um, work out their drainage situation. And uh, uh, over the years, the first time we really experienced uh, uh, drainage in the month of February was in 2000 when we had a thaw of the snow and then we had rain immediately after and we had lots of <clears throat> parts of the city including White Oaks area and I say White Oaks area specifically because that's my word um, and people suffered a lot because of the drainage and then we got a few after that uh, but but not the same thing like what happened in the month of February we got in the summer uh, in 2007 and I believe in 2010 and more recently 2014 I remember one day in the month of September when we were heading home. I was heading home from here in, uh, I think it was the 17th of September or 10th of September. I don't remember when, but somewhere around there. And we had this one month rain coming down in one hour and the whole of downtown was flooded. I couldn't even get past the, the tracks. Um, but the point that I want to make is that a lot of people out there, they, some people know of the, of the, the promotion that we have with respect to helping with respect to drainage and uh, have the stormwater separated from the sewer and some of the streets, but more especially have the, the tile um, 
either joined or separated from the sewer. And I think that this is what this is all about. Uh, we really need somebody to go door to door and explain to them. And this is really the extreme that we are going to here. But it's really something that I think is going to be a good plan. And I believe it was Councilor um, Ridley who proposed this some time ago, that we go this far. And I think that this council has done very, very well in accommodating this and approving this. It's going to be a while to get this done because we're going to have to hire students to do this, of course. But I think it's something that is worthwhile to help the community. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I uh, do have a couple questions, uh, number 17, if, if I can ask them. And I think it's important um, for myself, anyhow, that I understand the process that we're going to be undertaking here, because I know it's been a concern in the community um, about um, what the preferred option is and where we're going with this. So my first question is, uh, tonight we are going to be, um, I guess, uh, filing the notice of completion for the EA as as well as uh, it being placed on the public record for 30 days. And I'd like to ask through you, Your Worship, to staff what that process will be for the public, that 30-day notice, and how does it work? Ms. Shep. Thank you, Your Worship. So our standard process would be to file the notice with the province and then to provide a copy of this EA to be accessed through City Hall, usually through the clerk's office, where people can provide public comment to the ministry during that time as well as through us. Uh, at the conclusion of that, we would come back with the completion of the EA notification. Um, and, um, is there any other additional information I can share? I'd be pleased to do so. Uh, so would we be receiving further uh, responses from the public in your report back? Uh, through, through your worship, so through the public notification uh, process, people can comment on the EA as, it is, as it's been presented, and that then actually goes through the process with the Ministry of Environment, which may result in a Part 2 order or uh, may result in conclusion of that, depending on what's received from the public. Uh, thank you for that. So I, I found this one a, a very difficult decision to make. And uh, one of the questions that remains outstanding for me is that tonight we are basically going to be re uh, uh, moving a heritage house to another location. And I would like to ask again through you, your worship to staff, when does that process start and how will that look like? Will that be something that would be considered um, as we start the process, or, or when would, would that be done? Uh, through you, Your Worship, the work that would happen that would impact 100 Stanley Street is earlier in the project. Uh, we would see that happening within the next couple of years, but it is not certainly this year. There's a need to, to go through the property acquisition, the, the rest of the design process, and to design that relocation, should that be the direction from City Council? Uh, thank you. Um, you know, it, it, this is a tough one for me, and um, I'll um, still be thinking about it, I guess, as um, um, we move forward here. But uh, thank you for the um, response. Other speakers? Okay. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Van Holst. <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. Um, just speaking to number, s number five uh, about Hamilton Road. So this is uh, an important issue for, uh, for the ward. Uh, unfortunately, when the numbers came back, um, turned out I was essentially asking the committee to support the unsupportable motion. Um, although I'm kind of moved to sing from the man, man from La Mancha, impossible dream. Rather, I just point out that uh, Hamilton Road is also helping with uh, Jesse's journey. Um, there's a winter beater cruise happening next week. They called us and asked for 75 copies of our, our new coloring book for the tree trunk tour so um, so that's that's a nice thing to happen and uh, looking forward to the improvements that are going to be going on uh, this uh, this summer so thank you thank you if there are no additional speakers I know that uh, the chair council park wants to wrap up thank you acting chair right. <laughs> um, so as councillor Hopkins has already said on item number 17 it certainly is a difficult call for council and I just want to take this opportunity to really hammer home the importance of neighborhood advocacy. The River Forks Neighborhood Association did a tremendous amount of advocacy with the property owner at 100 Stanley Street. And if it wasn't for that advocacy, I don't know what kind of a recommendation we would have seen from 
um, staff coming forward on this re regarding the heritage retention of the building and all those big pieces here. So I just want to hammer home to the public that getting together and having more voices to advocate for any sort of a thing is always a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. And there are no additional speakers, so I will call the question. We're voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 to 0. And with that, item number 7 is on the floor. Any speakers to 7? Moved by Councillor Park. There are no speakers, so I'll call the question. We are voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 13 with one recuse. Third report of the Community and Protective Services Committee. Councillor Cassidy. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll put the, the whole report on the floor. Any speakers? I just wanted to speak in favor of the recommendations coming from committee that this is an important step in the process of the health unit and the Sixth London Health Unit uh, relocating. As folks know, there's a process been underway for some time, and this is one part of that process. I want to encourage my colleagues to support the recommendation. Other speakers? Okay, let's call the question. We're voting. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 0. Fourth report of the Corporate Services Committee. I will put uh, all of the clauses on the floor. I haven't heard that anyone would like any of them pulled. Okay, that's clause 1 through 9. Any speakers? There are no speakers. Let's call the question. We're voting. Still on audit. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 0. And the first report of the audit committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Draw your attention to the audit. It's on the. Uh, it's attached to the added uh, agenda, and I will put the entirety of the audit report uh, on the floor. I would uh, note that there is um, um, uh, an alignment of item four, the building permit review, with an item last night that we passed uh, at uh, SPPC, uh, where we approved a couple of additional positions in Mr. Costa's department. Uh, because of the demand uh, on the department for those services. So these two things are kind of working hand in glove. Okay, that's been moved by Deputy Mayor Hubert. Other speakers? Let's call the question. Voting. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 0. Okay, third report of SPPC. Councillor Ridley. Thank you. I am prepared to put the entire third report of SPPC on the floor. Any speakers? Got to wait for that to come up on screen. Looking for any volunteers for the fourth report of the council in closed session after this. You got it? All right. Councillor Ridley. Okay, Councillor Ridley, if you could please move that. Thank you. Any speakers? There are none. Let's call the question. We're voting. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 0. Thank you. On the fourth report of council in closed session, um, council is able to report, number one, 
330 Thames Street, sale of South Portion, that as a procedural matter pursuant to section 239.6 of the Municipal Act 2001, the following recommendation be forwarded to Council in closed session for the purpose of consideration, uh, considering whether the recommendation should be forwarded to Council for deliberation and a vote in public session. That on the recommendation of the Managing Director, Corporate Services and City Treasurer, Chief Financial Officer, and on the advice of the Manager of Realty Services, with respect to the south portion of vacant lands located at 330 Thames Street, described as part of Lot 25 north of York Street West, City of London, County of Middlesex, being part of PIN 08322-0020, the property, as shown in Schedule A of the following actions be taken. A, accept the offer submitted by Tricar Properties Limited, the purchaser, to purchase the la city land municipally known as 330 Thames Street, located on the east side of Thames Street, north side of York Street, City of London, County of Middlesex, described as part of Lot 25, north of York Street, west City of London, County of Middlesex, being part of PIN 08322-020, the property as shown on Schedule A of the offer containing an area of approximately 16,498 square feet for a sum of $260,000, as Schedule B subject to the following conditions. I, the purchaser acknowledged that property is being purchased on an as-is basis. I, I, the city agreeing at its expense to prepare and deposit on title on or before closing a reference plan describing the property. And III, the completion of the transaction contemplated pursuant to this offer is conditional upon the approval of the Provincial Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry and subsequent transfer of the property to the Corporation of the City of London by the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority, UTRCA. And the closing of the transaction contemplated with this offer shall occur 30 days following the transfer of property to the vendor by the UTRCA. Two, property acquisition, 332 Warrencliffe Road North, Western Road Widening Project. That as a procedural matter pursuant to section 239.6 of the Municipal Act, the following recommendation be forwarded to council in closed session for the purpose of considering whether the recommendation should be forwarded to council for deliberation and a vote in public session. That on the recommendation of the Managing Director, Corporate Services and City Treasurer, Chief Financial Officer, with the concurrence of the Director of Roads and Transportation advice and on the advice of the Manager of Realty Services with respect to the property located at 332 Warrencliffe Road North, further described as part of Lots 5, 6, and 7, Registrar's Compiled Plan 434W, designated as Part 2, Reference Plan 33R-7913, and being PIN 08248-0053LT, the following actions be taken. Accept the offer submitted by Thomas Bajovs uh, to sell the subject property to the city for the sum of 925000 subject to HST, inclusive of interest, subject to the following conditions. One, the vendor is not making any representation or warranty in relation to the condition or suitability of the property, and the city accepts the property as is. Two, the city agreeing to pay the vendor's reasonable legal and consulting costs, including fees, disbursements, and applicable taxes, to complete this transaction subject to the assessment. Three, the vendor obtaining on or before closing a discharge of mortgage for the property. Four, if required, the city agreeing to prepare and deposit on title on or before and at its expense a reference plan describing the property. Five, offer to settle the claimant's legal and consulting costs in the amount of up to $105,695, including disbursements and subject to HST, failing which the matter would be referred to assessment by the local assessment officer. And six, the vendor forever releases and discharges the city for and from all actions, causes of action, suits, claims, demands of every nature or kind arising out of or in any way related to or connected with the purchase, including all claims for the market value of land taken, any damages attributable to disturbance, any claims for injurious affection to remaining lands, business loss, interest, and or special difficulties in relocation now known or which may be known or anticipated but which may arise in the future. And 
B, the financing for this acquisition be approved as set out in the source of financing report attached to attached here to as Appendix A, it being noted that this is an important property as portions of it are required for the road widening along Warrencliffe Road North in 2018. Thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of all of us. <laughs> That's been moved by Councillor Ridley. Let's call the question. We're voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 to 0. Deferred matters, there are none. Inquiries. Emergent motions. And bylaws. So I don't believe that there are any conflicts on bylaws, so we'll do the entire list. Uh, this is Bill 83 through to 94. There's two adders, 93 and 94. This is first reading. Moved by Councillor Van Hole, seconded by Councillor Usher. Let's call the question. Voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 to 0. And second reading. Moved by Councillor Van Holst, seconded by Councillor Zaifman. Any discussion? Any speakers? Call the question. Voting. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 to 0. And third reading, please. Moved by Councillor Van Holst, seconded by Councillor Park. Let's call the question. Voting. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 0. And that brings us to adjournment, 515. A new record. Moved by Councillor Van Hall, seconded by Councillor Armstrong. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.